Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Wisteria here. This fairy tale is called Magic After Midnight. The wicked stepmother is about to meet her match. Are you sitting down? The voice at the other end of the phone asks. Feeling herself go cold, Marcia pushes a chair away from the table and slowly eases into it. Marcia exhales. I am now, she whispers. Why, oh why, had she picked up the phone? Because she had expected it to be Cindy. It's inoperable. I'm sorry. If you need Mom, Joshua calls from the bathroom. Mom, Alicia's going to do your hair. I have to go, Marcia says. She takes a deep breath. Smells the reek of trash, the trash that Cindy was supposed to take out. Mom! I've worked in an oncology department for the last ten years. I know what this means, Marcia says quickly. Why did I have to answer the phone? Mom! Joshua shouts once again. Marcia hangs up and walks a short distance through the apartment to the master bathroom. Alicia and Joshua beam at her as she walks in. Maybe it's the perfect vanity lighting, making their skin exceptionally golden and their dark eyes sparkle. Maybe it's the soul crushing news, casting the moment in sharp contrast, their health next to her illness. But they look especially beautiful and handsome. Alicia is wearing a green silk sheath dress with an amazing golden pearl belt. Joshua dyed his roots purple and the ends pink. He's wearing a grey suit with a pink triangle cufflinks, a blue shirt and white grey. What had he called it? A choke dye. As something that is popular in the realm of Vanahem, or is it Svartalflehem? Land of the Dwarves. Her children are so perfect. Marcia laughs despite everything, or perhaps because of everything. She feels tears come to her eyes and spill over. Mum, what's wrong? Alicia asks. A brush in her hand, her thick, dark hair is upswept and held back with pearl pins. Her dark eyes are wide and caring. It's a suit, Joshua says. I shouldn't have worn that suit. But it's his style again, Mum. And you said she shakes her head and hugs him. No, no. William would want you to wear it. The suit Joshua had worn just a few months ago no longer fits, as his shoulders seemingly grew three inches broader overnight. When the surprise invitation had come, he turned to his father's stepfather's Old clothes in desperation. After some adjustments, the suit fits surprisingly well. And hides the fact that Joshua doesn't have a lot hanging on those wide shoulders. Turning to Alicia, Marcia says, And you look beautiful. She feels tears hot on her cheeks again. A daughter is slouching. She always slouches. Marcia isn't sure if that is due to the weight of the world on Alicia, her oldest, most responsible child. Or if Alicia just feels eclipsed by her siblings. As Cindy is more conventionally beautiful, Joshua is so loud. Maybe it's both. Marcia swallows. The cut of Alicia gar Alicia's garment is just right for her broad shoulders and arms turned by swimming. The green is beautiful against her golden skin. Marcia says to her son, you did a wonderful job on the dress. Joshua flushes from his neck to his forehead. I told you those curtains were worth keeping. Mum, you're still crying? Alicia says. I'm just emotional, Marcia says, wiping her eyes silently and willingly. Don't ask. Don't ask. Alicia's brow pinches, but she gestures to the stool in front of the mirror and says, Sit down. Marcia takes a seat and Alicia starts brushing her hair back. The dress Marcia wears is something she pulled out of the closet from better times. And Joshua declared that the floral and black gown doesn't match Alicia's green, but at least it's so old, it is new again. Marcia frowns at the lines at the corners of her mouth, around her eyes, her forehead. She looks as old as she feels. She glances up at her children. Joshua's just 15. Alicia is only 17. They're too young to lose mother so soon, after losing William. She closes her eyes. Oh, but they'd lost more than that. 
Marcia's first husband had died, and they were five and three. William had been like a real father to them, to lose two fathers and now a mother. That grey streak through your black hair makes you look like Cruella de Vil. Joshua cackles. It fits your evil stepmother. Reputation. Marcia's eyes spring open. Joshua, Alicia hisses. Tugging Marcia's curls, a tight against her head. He flicks her wrist. She knows I'm only joking. Marcia's phone rings. Joshua looks over at the counter where she put it down. He scowls. Speak of the devil. Cindy's not the devil, Marcia says. She's going through a tough time, say her children in unison. Pick it up, Marcia says, wiping her eyes. Sighing, Joshua picks it up and walks out of the bathroom. Arranging Marcia's hair into a bun at the nape of her neck, Alicia asks, Is your stomach feeling better, Mum? Yes, she lies. She smiles and more tears fall out of her eyes. What is she going to do? Can she make it just three more years to see all the children come of age? Who will look after them if she doesn't? Joshua tromps back into the bathroom, rolling his eyes. Cindy's hairstyle and dress fitting date with a fairy godmother is running late, so she's going to take her godmother's chariot to the ball. At least we were still invited, Alicia says. Joshua snickers. We can still embarrass our stinking rich, snobby relatives. He fist bumps Alicia. Ugly stepsister powers activated. Marcia's eyes go wide. I'm not at her son's declaration of himself as a sister. You're not the ugly stepsisters. Alicia hopes. Of course not, Mum. Fairy tales, they aren't real. Mum, Joshua says. You're losing weight again. He picks up the dress as they walk through the grand foyer of Marcia's in-laws or former in-laws or whatever you call the family of a widow when the controlling members of said family never really liked her. I should have taken it in. It's fine, Marcia says. Normally she would bat his hand away, but she's too tired. She tells herself not to think of what that exhaustion means as they walk toward the main reception room. And there's a buzz of conversation. I know that we're probably only here because some event planner made a mistake on our invitation that was probably only supposed to be for Cindy, Alicia whispers. Marcia's jaw sags, as she'd actually thought exactly that, but her children had begged her to accept the invitation, as she thought her children thought the offer had been genuine. But I'm still so excited, Alicia says. We'll probably be bustled off into a corner, like the last time we were here, but still. We'll be the only people at school who've seen night elves up close, says Joshua, his voice bowling with excitement. Marcia rubs her temples, partly at the memory of the last time and partly because she feels like crying again and wants to hide her eyes. She has to give them this, one last night of excitement, hope and magic. Not everyone gets to meet elves, even since the opening of the realms. They tend to remain in our realm, but the night elves, a minor kingdom allied with the light elves, are interested in trading minerals for what? She's not sure. Clutching her side, she rubs her temples. Her wealthy, well-connected in-laws made their fortune in commodities future. Of course, they'd have manoeuvred to have the night elves come to call. They step into the reception room. The swirl of voices oppress the bodies. Her flamboyant son whispers dramatically, Oh, my... God! Oh my God! Alicia gasps. There! There! Marcia drops a hand from her face. She looks around. There are male and female elves intermingled through the crowd. They are pointed ears with two perfect faces. They're tall, elegant, dressed in silk brocades that are elegant and alien and they're beautiful, Alicia whispers. Vampires, Marcia whispers at the same time. 
She can see fangs peeking between their lips as they speak. Plop her doors in their mouths and take sips of their wine. Beautiful, Alicia whispers. And Joshua snorts and whispers. We know. Our stepfamily are all bloodsuckers. Don't worry, Mum. We'll be careful. Alicia sighs and squeezes Marcia's arm. How could Dad have been so nice with his family? So evil. They hadn't all been evil. William's parents had been lovely. But since the mother-in-law was put into a nursing home and the father-in-law's passing, the fortune had fallen into the care of Cindy's godmother. Marcia doesn't remind the children of this. She's too petrified. Is she hallucinating? She turns, slowly in place, dreading what she might find. That she's going mad, or that her hallucinations are real. She finds herself staring at a man standing so close he could reach out and touch her. He's one of them. Tall with olive skin, dark hair curling in ringlets around his pointed ears. His eyes are light brown, flecked with yellow. His cheekbones are very sharp. His lips are slightly parted, as though in surprise, and his fangs are glinting in the light. He must have heard her. A swelling, she takes a step back and blinks, and the fangs are gone. She's hallucinating. The news of her disease has sent her into shock. She has to hold it together. She has to. Just tonight. One more night. Are you who? An old woman cries from behind Marcia. Alicia grumbles. And here comes Cinderella and her fairy godmother. Stop calling her that, Marcia says. Alicia and Joshua have already turned around. Oh my God, Joshua whispers. Those are Vera Wang gowns made with elven silk. My heart just broke. I feel so shabby. She looks beautiful, Alicia says. And there's no doubt that Cindy is beautiful. Along with her blonde hair, she has enormous blue eyes, a delicate nose and a mouth shaped like bow. And Cindy knows she's beautiful. She often complains that if she were just a little taller, she could be a model. You both look beautiful too, Marcia protests. She tries to turn but feels a sharp pain in her side. She takes a breath. It's okay, Mum, Joshua says. We're not the kind of girls who get swept up by Prince Charming. We've accepted our fate. But we can enjoy the ride. That indeed we can. And that's the end of part one, because I don't want to go on too long, obviously. So it goes over 15 minutes, because it's a long story. Thank you for listening to part one. We will continue when we come back at the party and see where it goes. Many blessings.